This video shows you how to use Excel's Power Query to automate data cleaning and referencing instead of manually copying, pasting, and fiddling with the data. It is the fourth of a five-part tutorial that helps you work smart by guiding you on how to set up an automated template. You can download the template at the link below. We promise that it will save you a lot of time and pain in the long run as you frequently update your reports. Today's goal, we will use Excel's Power Query to lay the groundwork for a faster, more efficient and less error-prone way to dynamically calculate measures such as rolling last 12 months year-to-date, financial year-to-date totals. Although we have achieved this in the first three tutorials using normal Excel formula, there is still much room for improvement. Before we begin, make sure you've got the right version of Excel that has Power Query and Power Pivot. You can refer to the link below to check and set up. In this video, we will use the Power Query user interface to connect to our primary data and set the right data types. The idea is to set it up once and use forevermore. No more repetitive, time-consuming preparation work and less risk of errors. Using the connected primary data, we then automatically generate two reference tables, a category table and a calendar table. They will be used in the next tutorial to create efficient, powerful, and dynamic calculations. Let's start off by creating your first query, which connects the raw primary data and sets the data types correctly. To connect the raw data into Power Query, first create an Excel table. Select any cell within Sheet, Raw Data's range of data, go to Excel's Insert tab, and click on Table. Be sure to set the range correct that is, starting from row 9 instead of 8. Check the box that says, My table has headers too. Change your table name to F Data. Now, bring your F Data table into Power Query. Click on Excel's Data tab under the Get and Transform Data section. Select the From Table button. You'll be brought to the Power Query Editor user interface. Before we go any further, Make sure you make your formula bar visible. You can do so by going to the View tab under Layout, check the box Formula Bar. In the Power Series way, we won't be needing the year, 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 month, month column, so we can remove it. Select the column, right click, and choose Remove Column. It's good practice to only bring in the columns you need as it saves space and speeds up overall performance. Next, we set your data to the correct types by clicking on the small icons next to the header words. In this case, we want the dates to be in date format, category to be in text, and value to be whole numbers. Before closing and loading this query, make sure to also choose a relevant name for the query we've just created. Here, we've named it data. The importance of this will become apparent as we proceed further into the template setup. Finally, Select the Close and Load button on the top left-hand corner on the Home tab. Click on the Words portion of the button, and a drop-down list will appear. You want to choose the Close and Load to option. A separate window will pop up when you choose this option. Make sure you select the correct options. First, choose to Only Create Connection as the option on how to view the data in Excel. Secondly, check the box at the bottom that says Add this data to the data model. We will explain in the next tutorial what this data model is about. Once the above is done, hit the OK button. You now have your primary data table set up. Making use of this first query, we can then automate the creation of a subcategory table. This table contains a unique list of all the product categories available. Creating a separate subcategory table has its benefits, especially if you're intending to use slices later to filter your data via these categories. The filtering will be done off this category table, which has significantly lesser rows, i.e. 21 rows, than the primary data table, i.e. 700 plus rows in this case, but imagine if it has over 10,000 or 200,000 rows. It's a much faster process. With the first query created, a query list should appear on the right-hand side of the worksheet. If you don't see it, click on Show Queries under the Data tab's Get and Transform. 
right click on the data query and select reference. A new query will be set up based off this first query. Once the Power Query Editor window has been loaded, hold on to the Control key while clicking on the Date and Value columns. When all columns have been selected, release the Control key and right-click on any of the headers. Select Remove Columns from the drop-down. Right-click on the remaining category column header and choose Remove Duplicates from the drop-down. If you would like or need to add on further categorization to the cleaned up category list, you can do so by adding additional columns through the Add Column tab. In our template, we inserted a larger umbrella grouping of cell phone, camera, computer, home system, and others. To do this, click on the Column from Examples button and select From All Columns option. Start keying in your additional categorization in the column that appears on the right. Once you are done, click on the OK button. To change the name of the header, double-click on it directly and make the edit. Finally, remember to assign a relevant name to the query before you close and load it. Here, we've named it Category. Making use of this first query again, we can then automate the creation of a sub-calendar table. In essence, the separate calendar table here exists for the same purpose as the reference date table does for our Part 1 to 3 Excel template. In Part 5, it will enable power pivot formulas to carry out dynamic calculations that factor in time period sensitivity. Again, right-click on the data query and select Reference. A new query will be set up based off this first query. With the Power Query Editor window opened, click on the Advanced Editor button that sits under the Home tab. Once the Advanced Editor window is loaded, copy and paste this snippet of M language code in it. You can find this snippet off this video's blog post. Click on the Done button to load the code. What the M language code does is to create a list of dates based on the earliest and latest date you have in your data. If, for whatever reason, you want to reference a different original source data to build the calendar table from, you need to change the line source equals to data. Replace the word data with the name of the reference query you want to base the calendar table off. Remember to give the query a relevant name, we've named it calendar, before closing and loading the query. Now that you've got all your queries set up with Power Query, we are ready for the grand finale. In the fifth and final part of this tutorial, we will use Power Pivot to dynamically calculate measures such as rolling last 12 months, year-to-date, and financial year-to-date totals.